The first week of the NHL season is underway, and we've got some incredible highlights to start the season, but some overreactions as well. Plus, we've got a full weekend of action to preview coming up all on today's Locked On NHL. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to Locked On NHL for October 13th. I am Rachel Donner from Locked On Flyers. I'm here each and every Friday with Gil Martin of Locked On Islanders. Thanks for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. You can subscribe or follow us for free over on YouTube. We're on the SiriusXM app now. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, subscribe to get our latest episode. As soon as it's available here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Gil, how are we feeling after this first week of action? Feeling good. It's uh, great to have hockey back. Of course, my team hasn't started yet. They uh, get their season <laughs> underway tomorrow, uh, Saturday evening, finally. Uh, so I think Islander fans may have had the longest wait of any team to get the new season started. But so good to have hockey back and so many great stories from around the league already. Yeah, I think, you know, as far as the on ice action, of course, that come from behind win uh, from the Leafs and a hat trick from Austin Matthews in that one. Uh, What an incredible way for the Leafs to start their season. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, you have a a dramatic come from behind win and it's got to give that team a a, a jolt of confidence and, and just a good feeling that they're never out of the game. It, it, that's a way you really want to start your season. Yeah, I, I think so. And, uh, you know, I think with the Toronto Montreal rivalry, uh, you know, very disappointing for the Habs who thought they might have had one there, uh, but, you know, a, a very late goal to tie it up uh, must be a rough way for them on the other side of the coin as well. No question. I mean, different expectations this year in Montreal than in Toronto. uh, But still, when you're that close to beating your arguably your biggest rival, you want to finish the job. Absolutely. Uh, I I think, though, they're not feeling quite as bad as the Edmonton Oilers were after their season opener. Yeah, that one was very, very tough. And uh, look, the, uh, you know, the, the Oilers... It's a long season. It's it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I'm confident the Oilers will be okay, but uh, not the way that team wanted to start the season, for sure. No, but it was a great way for the Canucks to start the season with that 8-1 to one victory. Four-goal game, a pants trick, as they say, <laughs> uh, from Brock Besser on the Canucks. And uh, that was a wild one, for sure. It was. And, uh, you know, I, I also love the the quote from, you know, the, the Canucks coach saying, hey, we're not ordering rings just yet. I mean, <laughs> you know, OK, great. You beat Edmonton. That's a, an accomplishment. You put up eight goals on them. And then, you know, it, uh, part of it comes back to, you know, the Edmonton Oilers and defense and goaltending. And, and it, you know, does that get in their heads? Or do you take the attitude of, hey, it's one game, we weren't ready, we'll be ready for game two? Yeah, I I think so. We'll talk more about that in our overreactions segment as well. Um, I do think on the Canucks side, there's been a lot of questions about this team heading into this season. You know, did they in fact take a step forward? Could they get the scoring they need? And um, I think that it, we know it's possible now, whether they can sustain, uh, nobody expect them to sustain this level of output, but to be able to score, I think, is uh, a really important thing for them. And uh, we'll see if they can carry it through to other games. I think the other 
big thing or perhaps one of the biggest things in the league was the Connor Bedard uh, goal watch. Like when was he going to get his first NHL goal? And I'm honestly, I'm so glad for him that he got it in his second game. He got a point in his first game, a goal in his second game, uh, even though they lost that one. So I'm sure it was a little disappointing uh, just because, you know, the, the loss probably outshadowed the goal a little bit. But I think like if it took him any longer than like maybe three games, people would start to overreact about that. Right. Yeah, the 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 microscope is focused clearly on Connor Bedard, and if he goes three, four, five games without a goal, you would start to hear this little buzz. And look, that's part of the pressure that goes with being that you know being touted as a generational talent before you've even taken the ice. But uh, so far, and again, it is very early, but Connor Bedard seems to be living up to expectations. Yeah, it is so interesting. He just, I mean, he is a child. He's 18 years old, yeah. but he looks it. He's just such a baby face. But then he goes out there and does these incredible things on the ice. And uh, he's he's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I mean, he already has points in his first two games and, and the goal. And then you're thinking, wow, if this kid... What if if he's putting up points like this already? And again, it's only two games, but what is he going to be like in two years, three years when he's experienced and grows, you know, larger and more, you know, puts on some more muscle onto his frame? Right. The potential and the future for him, it, it's pretty impressive to think about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh Shesterkin on the Rangers also had an accomplishment in their first win, a uh, hundred wins for him. And I think that uh, it, it's a, a really great way to start the season for the Rangers. Yeah. And again, when you, when you're facing a milestone like that, you want to get it over with. I mean, being stuck on 99 wins all off season is got it, it had to be a little bit, uh, frustrating, but you know, more important for the Rangers, obviously, getting the win. Shesterkin was very good, only gave up one goal. And look, Buffalo is a team we know that can put the puck in the net. You know, offense last year was hardly their problem. So, you know, good win for the Rangers, good win for Igor Shesterkin. And a uh, hundred wins, you, you know, there's going to be a lot more where that came from if he stays healthy. Absolutely. And uh, we already had just one of those games in the NHL, uh, Florida versus the Minnesota Wild. Florida outshot the Wild 41 to 21, but the Wild still win in a shutout two to nothing. Uh, Gustafson, of course, uh, excellent in net for the Wild. Yeah. And, you know, when your goalie plays that well, it, it, it really does benefit the team and, and steal a win, basically. Florida Panthers, I can't say I'm worried about them after one game. They they dominated statistically, dominated in the faceoff circle. You the, doubled them up practically in shots, 41 to 21, 14 to 5 in the first period, 15 to 5 in the third. But Gustafson was just on his game. And uh, Minnesota got enough offense to shut him out two to nothing and uh, get their season off to a good start. Yep. And uh, then we still, interestingly, in Ottawa, have this Shane Pinto situation hanging yeah. over their heads. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And I have heard some rumors that, oh, the New York Islanders might be interested in Shane Pinto. He is a Long Island native. But when it comes to making trades like that, uh, when it comes to Lou Lamorello, I believe it when I see it. And I almost never see it. So, you know, there is that. But uh, clearly the Senators need to figure out something uh, as far as either, you know, signing or dealing Shane Pinto. Yeah, it was kind of fascinating in the uh, Senators season opener when they lost to Carolina. Matthew Joseph, who they had been trying to trade to create the cap space for Shane Pinto, scored in that game. So, <laughs> yeah, a little irony there and and you know, not to have a full 
you know, a number of players on your roster, you know, not the way you want to start the season. It's like you're already in cap hell and it's game one, you know? It's, yeah, the new owners must be thrilled. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Real thrilled. Yeah, and then uh, we've got a Lindy Ruff extension in New Jersey as well. Uh, going from chance of fire Lindy uh, to an extension a little over a year later uh, must feel pretty good for him. It, it's got to, and what a year it was. I mean, this New Jersey team is exciting to watch. They're fast, they're young, they're talented, and they surprised a lot of people last year by, you know, what was it? The, the battle for first place went down to the last game uh, in on the schedule in the Metropolitan Division. Uh, they are a team with the arrow pointed up, and I think Ruff seriously deserved that extension. I don't think people expected him to do that good a job with such a young team, and yet he did, and that's to his credit. Can he keep it up? Can he do it again this year and next year? Well, one step at a time. Exactly. All right. Well, we've already hinted at some early overreactions. We're going to dig into those coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace Case. The Jace Case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind so that you're not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. So don't get caught unprepared. Get $20 off on these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using my code LOCKEDON at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. So, of course, uh, with slightly less than a week of action, uh, we already have some overreactions uh, to begin the season because what would it be uh, in the NHL without some of those? Um, And I think, you know, to me, one of the most ridiculous things is the opening game stats that sometimes get thrown about. Like, honestly, what do they really mean? I mean, uh, great. Jack Hughes uh, has multiple points in three separate season opening games. Jack Hughes is a good hockey player. Like, that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, look, you, it, it's it's a nice stat. It's something that makes you go, oh, wow. But its long-term impact is not that great. He's going to have a lot of really strong games. And uh, look, I guess he he's excited to start the season and gets off to a very good start. Yeah, I mean, if if you look at some of them, they don't pan out to any long-term success. Uh, for instance, the Philadelphia Flyers have collected at least one point in all of the last nine season openers. How wow. successful has that led them to be? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a nice little so, stat. Maybe maybe it matters more to people who are betting on games than it does to, be. to anybody else. But uh, look. The two points count the same on opening day as they do in the last game of the season. So bank those points. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So another overreaction or potential overreaction. The Seattle Kraken are 0-2 to start the season, including getting shut out by Nashville. Should we be worried for them? Not yet. No. Uh, You know, two games doth not a season make. And, you know, I, I... I have said the Kraken in my mind, you know, they, they surprised a lot of people last year. Is it possible that they take a a half a step back this year because they're not going to sneak up on everybody? Maybe, but two games, I'm not making that determination. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it, it, it is too early to make that determination. Um, you know, we we talked about it in the first segment with the Oilers versus Canucks opening day. And uh, so there's, you know, some voices out there saying, will the Oilers goaltending sink them again? Yeah. and Well, look, 
when you're talking about the Edmonton Oilers, that's a very well-worn script. And people have been saying that for a very long time. But again, it's one game. And I, I am not going to panic after one game. I, I think maybe the Edmonton Oilers weren't ready to start the season uh, psychologically. Maybe they need to shore up their team defense a little bit. Yeah. Again, you do the same thing if you give up eight goals in a game in February. So let's right. not panic. Let's wait for a pattern to emerge for this year's team. And and on paper, they should be better than that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and there's no doubt in my mind that they will get the scoring going. I oh, think, yeah, <laughs> you know, with that kind of offensive firepower, there's no way that no, they're going they're, to they're, struggle. That's just a question of time. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think that there could be some overreaction starting with the situation in Tampa with Steven Stamkos' contract negotiation being put off until the end of the season. Yeah, and that's an interesting situation where the general manager, Julian Brisbois, is basically saying they're not going to talk to Stamkos about a new deal until after the season. They are not going to negotiate during the year. He's coming into the last year of an eight-year, $68 million contract. I, I mean, I understand based on his injury history and the cap situation why management would be in favor of that. I guess the question becomes how does Stamkos handle it? And if the Lightning are slumping, I mean, is it even possible that if they're not where they want to be at the trade deadline, they could possibly trade Steven Stamkos. Oh, I don't know if I want to get into that conversation. Yeah. Because... I mean, uh, wow. You know? Yeah. I, I don't think that's a possibility. I think Stamkos is going to finish his career with the lightning. I just really think, you know, again, with his injury history, I think they're just going to have to figure out where he is health wise, you know, how he's feeling, where the team is and figure out the right plan and the right kind of contract to finish out his career. I think that could be part of it as well. Right. Because we don't know now, like in terms of what the overarching plan is as the Tampa Bay Lightning kind of move on from this era of dominance that they had a little bit. Um, you know, they still are contenders, but at the same time, we're not as they're not as strong as they once were. Right. So it's figuring out what makes sense for Stamkos as well and how he wants to finish out his career. And they won't know until later this season. Right. And I'm sure, you know, the Lightning probably want a very incentive laden deal, uh, including mm -hmm. James Quaid as being one of those incentives. But, uh, you know, whether Stamkos at this stage in his career is willing to accept that uh, remains to be seen. So I get the feeling they will get a deal done at some point, even if they don't start negotiating until after the season. But, uh, you know, it's sort of hanging over this team now as to what Stamkos' future with the organization is going to be. He is such a cornerstone part of that franchise. and always will be an all-time great member of the Lightning. The question is how much longer he'll be in a Lightning sweater. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, that will be an interesting storyline to follow this season for sure. Um, I, I think that this could just be me. I haven't really seen it a ton out there thus far because it's very early. But Taylor Hall is week to week after getting hit by Brandon Carlo. Uh, for the Blackhawks. And one of the things in the Connor Bedard conversation has been having him with Taylor Hall out there to support him uh, offensively and just be that good line mate. Um, and should be, we, we be worried for Connor Bedard with Taylor Hall not there for at least a, a little while? Uh, mm, concerned more than worried, maybe. But yeah, I mean, it, look. Hall was the ideal line mate on that roster to help the transition of Connor Bedard to the NHL, but he'll still be in the locker room. He'll still be able to, uh, you know, talk to him after practice and after games. It's not the same as having him on the ice, but he's still around. He's still going to be able to 
be a positive influence on Bedard. So concerned, but not worried. Yeah, I think that's the right attitude to have. But that was certainly the first thought in my mind when um, I heard that Taylor Hall had gotten hurt. Um, And then sort of one frivolous overreaction here uh, to start the season. The Toronto Maple Leafs have changed their goal song. I don't know if you've heard I did not. that they have been using uh, Hall and Oates, You Make My Dreams Come True for quite some time. And it has been very divisive for most of the time they have been using it and they have changed it um, to the way they're going to use different songs over the course of the season. Um, they're going to keep the same song in a single game. They're not switching it up within a game. Uh, but they started with The Pursuit of Happiness by Kid Cudi. And they're supposedly going to mix up different genres based on the theme of that night. They've got some throwback nights and, and stuff like that. There's a lot of people that are very happy because they hate the hollow notes. There's people who are sad because they like the tradition. All of this, um, even as somebody, my, me personally, who likes goal song drama, um, it's it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Toronto fans, this should be the biggest controversy you have all season yep. <laughs> because, you know, th- there's never a lack of drama with the Maple Leafs. Why not start th- with this? Absolutely. All right. We have a fabulous weekend ahead of NHL action to preview, and we are going to do that coming up next. The NHL season is finally here. I love the NHL and hockey, and I know you do too. And that's why I want to tell you about Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is my go-to platform for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey. With Sleeper, you have a chance to win 100 times your cash on daily fantasy. The NHL has never been more exciting than it is now. We've got all those star players like Connor McDavid, Alex Ovechkin going for that goals record, Sidney Crosby, the young kid Connor Bedard that we were just talking about, and Kale McCarr, or my favorite Flyers players like Sean Couturier, who's back this year, and Travis Konechny. You can simply select more or less based on their stats, such as goals, assists, points, saves for goaltenders, and more. Yes, you heard me, hockey fan. Sleeper offers 100 times payout, so start paying attention, make the right picks, and you could win big. Use the promo code Locked On NHL, and you'll get up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's Locked On NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Gil, we have a full weekend of regular season hockey ahead. I'm so excited for us to be able to talk about this for the first time in a long time. I love uh, it. We are, of course, in the get around the NFL schedule time of year in the yep. NHL. So we have a stacked schedule on Saturday in particular. Tonight, though, uh, we do have two games. The Arizona Coyotes are in New Jersey, and this is Arizona's first game uh, yep. where we will see the regular season debut of Logan Cooley. So seeing Logan Cooley up against Jack Hughes, that should be a fun one. That should be a good one. And uh, obviously, you know, the Coyotes traveling east for this game. And I always wonder, you know, you have a matchup with a team that's played a game or two and then a team that has had a longer layoff since the end of preseason. Who gets the advantage in that situation? Uh, We'll see that a couple of times over this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the other game on the docket is a huge rivalry matchup tonight uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins at the Washington Capitals and they've done a good job the the Arizona at New Jersey game starts at 7 the Pens at Cap starts at 7:30 so we've got a staggered schedule for Friday night uh, good on the NHL for that absolutely and look Sid versus Ovi Caps versus Pens uh, that's a fun rivalry within the metropolitan division Yeah, Uh, then we have our 14-game Saturday (laughs) schedule uh, that kicks off in the early afternoon with the Flyers in Ottawa. 
Um, I, I think that, again, with the Shane Pinto situation, that's the real narrative going into that game, uh, as well as the Flyers when they play Claude Giroux. There's always, you know, a little bit of emotional baggage around that for us. But, no. uh, yeah. Yeah, no question. And and look, Giroux was such a great flyer for so long. I, I'm sure Flyer fans are wishing him well, except on situations like right. Saturday when he's facing his former team. Exactly. Uh, and then I, I'm intrigued by this Florida Panthers at Winnipeg Jets game in the afternoon. I think both of these teams are at a bit of a crossroads here in terms of uh, you know, the Panthers are under a lot of pressure to repeat the success of last season, but they don't have all the pieces that they had. And Winnipeg is trying to hold on to being a contending team. And and this is a, an interesting way to have an early season game for both of them. Yeah, I, I like this matchup. It is intriguing. Four o'clock Eastern time start. Florida's hurting on the blue line due to injuries. So I wouldn't yeah. surprise me that they get off to a little bit of a shaky start uh, as a result of that. And and look, Winnipeg finally put some of those contract situations to bed, signing Hellebuck, for example. Uh, but they need to produce now on the ice. Now that they've you know inked the big contracts, we're going to see how quickly they're able to get on track. Yeah. Uh, the Calgary Flames will be in Pittsburgh and uh, the Pens will be on the second half of a back-to-back, -back, uh, having played the night before. The Flames started out the season with a win. So uh, this should be a, a real good matchup as well. Yeah, I, I like it. And, uh, you know, don't sleep on the Flames. I think it's a team that could be better than a lot of people think. Yeah. Then one of the other uh, games that I'm excited for is a late game, the Canucks and Oilers rematch of that oh. opening game that was eight to one. I feel like it'll be a little more balanced this time around. Yeah, if they offer you uh, a plus, you know, an over under on eight goals for the Canucks, take under. They're not going to duplicate it. Any other game that day that you're going to watch? Oh, boy. You know, I think the Kraken and the Blues is kind of interesting. You, you mentioned Seattle off to the 0-2 start. They're on the road. There's going to be a little pressure. You don't want to start 0-3, especially with a young team like the Kraken. You don't want to start getting that doubt creeping in. So I, I'm keeping an eye on that game. How about you? Sounds yeah, sounds like fun. Um, Probably the Canes at Kings, too. I think that should be... A real fun game. Uh, only two games on Sunday. Both of them have both teams being in the second half of back to backs in them. Less than 24 hours for the Canes at the Ducks as well. Uh, so I think we're going to have a lot of tired legs on yeah. Sunday. Probably. And, uh, you know, the Ducks, they'll be waiting for them. And, and, I, I guess, you know, Anaheim is not expected to be contenders. Carolina expected to be among the league's elite, but the travel and, and the back-to-back, -back, it'll be interesting. Yeah, it will for sure. And uh, I don't know, the like Tampa Bay Lightning at Ottawa Senators, it feels like a team maybe on its way out of contention versus a team that should, in theory, be working towards contention. Uh, I think that uh, those kind of matchups are always interesting to watch. But uh, that is your weekend ahead of hockey. Thank you so much for listening to Locked On NHL today and every day. Of course, Gil will be back on Monday's show talking to hosts from around the Locked On NHL network with the biggest stories about their teams. Have a great weekend, everyone.